storms of a night, partly to mostly cloudy, 40 to 45. A few isolated showers Tuesday, partly to mostly cloudy, in the low 50s. And partly to mostly sunny Wednesday, high temperature in the mid 50s. Your life, your music, we're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Oli Barrett. Vladimir Putin's won another six-year term as president of Russia. International weapons experts are visiting Britain to test the substance used to attack a former spy and his daughter. Yi Gang has been named as the next governor of China's central bank in a move interpreted as trying to ensure continuity. And Australia has offered support to end the humanitarian crisis in Myanmar's Rakhine state as Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull met with Aung San Suu Kyi in Canberra. It's 901. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. KLEK 102.5 FM, good morning to you on your Monday. It's March 19, 2018. This is Community Conversations. Kato Wonder is in the studio with you. And before we get started, I just want to very quickly to say thank you very much to everyone who participated in our pledge drive. Thank you to everyone, especially who pledged thank you to all of the volunteers everyone who gave their testimonials we just thank god for each and every one of you and i'm going to be talking about that more in the days to come but we don't want to waste any time on our guest we have in the studio today and our guest for today is state representative dan sullivan and representative sullivan represents district 53 which covers i believe he said parts of jonesboro and brooklyn which is in our listing area now the reason that uh, we have a Uh, Representative Sullivan here, Uh, we want to give him the opportunity to talk about an issue with the recent budget that the Arkansas uh, legislature uh, passed. Uh, I believe last week, or maybe even the week before that, we had uh, Senator John Cooper on, and he called out Representative Sullivan and some of his uh, other members of the House. And of course, KLK, we do believe in fairness, so we want to give uh, Representative Sullivan the opportunity to respond so i'm going to first give the background i'm going to read first senator cooper's statement and then i want to read senator i'm just going to be a representative sullivan statement both of these were posted in the jonesboro sun and both were posted on facebook so first we'll start with senator cooper's uh statement says senator cooper disagrees with supreme court decision earlier this week the united states supreme court made their ruling on king versus burwell another case over the constitutionality of the affordable care act which is also known as obamacare no matter what side of the obamacare debate you find yourself we should all be concerned with the precedent that was set in their ruling the court basically said the intent of the act was good so that it does not matter if it meets requirements established in other laws obviously for those like me who oppose Obamacare his opinion was disappointed and actually you know what I'm sorry I'm reading your statement first okay well I'm gonna go ahead and continue so this is a this is a oh, let me make sure I think I got my notes missing. this is what happens when you don't don't do the, the prep right okay this is Senator Cooper statement yeah I'm sorry all right so getting back into it apologize for that you know I was sick yesterday so I'm, we're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. Obviously, for those like me who oppose Obamacare, this opinion was disappointing. But even if you are in favor of the health care policy, think for a moment about what this ruling means to future political debates. Moving forward, current law, possibly including our Constitution, no longer matters. If a small but loud group of individuals are able to persuade lawmakers to do their bidding, we can see legislation that goes against what the majority of citizens want and desire. When this happens, the majority will no longer be able to depend upon our courts to set things right by ensuring and everything stays within the bounds of existing law. At a time when political discourse seems to be dominated by those on the fringes, this could be bad news. As an example, as a state senator, there are times when I hear from a very vocal minority in my district. While these individuals want me to agree with them 100% of the time, I have to carefully weigh their opinions against those from the majority of folks in Craighead County. Meaning these people are my friends and I respect their thoughts. What happens when a legislature becomes dominated by people who will only listen to the fringes? My guess is more bad laws like Obamacare that hurt our economic growth and raise our government debt. The Supreme Court's job is to interpret if a law... Um, and you know what? This is not even the one about... Uh, 
<laughs> the topic at hand. Now, I've read all this stuff. So anyway, because I don't want to waste any more time. But the point is, because I remember the interview, Senator Cooper basically disagreed with yourself and uh, some of the others that voted against the budget, um, saying that that was not the time to um, have that debate. The, that, the time for that was when Arkansas worked, when, when, when you always debate Arkansas works, whether to keep it going or to drop it. Uh, and that vote did pass. And he said by voting no in the budget vote, that was basically holding up the whole budget, causing for various agencies in the state of Arkansas to be defunded. So I'm going to just go ahead because I'm, I've already screwed up enough today and just let you just tell your side of the story in your own sure. words. Well, I appreciate it. And, and uh, you know, I probably am familiar, or many of your listeners are familiar with me. I worked for the Jonesboro Schools for a number of years. I uh, worked for a business that dealt with a lot of the commun local community here. So I've, I'm guessing a lot of your uh, listeners know me and have known me for a while and know what I stand for and know that I uh, stand up for the people that elect me. And, you know, my vote there was to support the people that elected me to office. And essentially what the senator was saying was that we were holding up the DHS budget over Arkansas Works. Uh, and you know, the purpose in our, my vote against that, as my article in the Jonesboro Sun uh, reflected, I think last week, was to bring a more public discussion of what Arkansas Works does to the state of Arkansas and the impact. And we had that A discussion in a, a budget committee meeting and when people wanted to discuss that, one another senator brought up uh, or asked for an opportunity to look for other funding sources. Maybe we would be better instead of going with Arkansas Works and Obamacare, maybe it might be a better decision to put those people on Medicaid, regular Medicaid. And that was a debate, that debate was shut down in budget. And the senator that proposed that and had the, the uh, data to support his claim really wasn't allowed to have that full debate and that's can you, okay can you explain why he wasn't able to have that debate he got voted down okay they took a vote and voted voted uh, his proposal down so my attempt and several others our attempt was to hold up the dhs budget to force a more public debate and i think that's what john was referring to when he said we're trying to hold up the entire system and one of the comments John made was this strategy had never been used before. And that's just false. That very a day before that, a group of Democrats and Republicans held up the uh, Treasury budget. And when the Treasury budget gets held up, then every person in the state of Arkansas that got a check from the, from the state, their check would have been held up. They held that budget up because of some embedded language in the budget. Uh, and it actually worked and when the embedded language was pulled out. So just to, you know, just to make it simple, uh, you know, the tactic that John referenced as being unheard of and unfair is used all the time. In fact, two years ago, the governor used a line item veto, essentially a line item veto, which is not even in the Arkansas Constitution to pass Arkansas Works. So that was part of my response to, to John uh, you know, was this was more common than he said. The other part that John referenced that we were intimidated, and I think you kind of read about it, which you read before about small groups who have, of people trying to influence uh, the majority or a small vocal minority. You know, the my position is aligned with our Attorney General Leslie Rutledge, who has joined a lawsuit with other states to end Obamacare. It's aligned with our lieutenant governor, who's been very public and outspoken that Obamacare and Arkansas Works is not in the benefit of Arkansans and several others. Kato, let me share just a bit of information. Sure. 73, now think about this and hold on to your wallet, but Arkansas pays $578 a month to Blue Cross and Blue Shield for insurance for Arkansas Works. 73,000 people, 73,000 people in 2017 did not qualify for the program. They were out of state. 
They were um, in Medicare instead of Medicaid, or I'm sorry, Medicaid instead of Medicare. A whole bunch of reasons that we were paying the insurance company $578 a month for 73,000 people. Now that money could be used for a lot of other things besides paying for able-bodied, working age adults without children, and that's what we're paying the insurance company. That's what? part of the opposition that I uh, think needs to have a very public discussion. Okay, and now my question to you about that is, you know, obviously if there are people who are not eligible um, for it, you know, then yes, they that should be addressed, but uh, my concern is for the people that do need it that, you know, having something in place to, you know, especially our more vulnerable members of society, make sure that, you know, they can um, have their needs um, met as well. So I, I would hope to see that, you know, the they don't, the, the, the water isn't thrown out with the baby, the old saying. I'm, I'm Listen, probably this, paraphrasing. I think there's nobody in the state of Arkansas that I'm aware of that disagrees with you. You know, Arkansas is a poor state. I've worked with a lot of your listeners, including your listeners, a lot of people including your listeners who are in that category. Mm -hmm. And I think the people that know me and have worked with me uh, understand the compassion that I have for people and my desire to help people out who need a, a helping hand. But that's not what this legislation was about. And that's why I was, was kind of uh, disturbed by John's statements because John knows me. He knows that I care about those people and our no vote had nothing to do with people who are needy and people who need those services. It had to do with able-bodied, working age adults who don't need to be on the program. You know, we were sending people that register for this program, they're on it, then when we DHS sends an email or a letter to the people, they can't find them. But we're paying $578 a month for those people. Now, if we're truly concerned for those in need, why would we be paying for people who are not, who don't qualify or shouldn't be on the program? That's to actually taking money away from the population that you just described. Okay, and I want to use my situation um, as an example. Uh, I, you know, be, excuse me, I told, I work volunteer at the station, so I don't earn a salary. My spouse uh, earns too much money for me to qualify for Arkansas Works or anything like that. So uh, I actually have to pay for a private plan, which costs um, $200 a month. And I don't get really a lot of benefits. Um, as you, mm -hmm. I am one of these able-bodied people that you are talking about. And, you know, in fact, I worked so hard the past three days, I actually got sick yesterday. So I actually had to slow down. But what do you propose? Because you, you are on record for being against Obamacare. But what do you propose for people like me who are working but, you know, may not can afford insurance? And I had a major surgery last year, and so I got hit with a bunch of medical bills. So what about for those of us who are working, um, are willing to purchase insurance, but, you know, because of the cost are just so high to make the cost affordable for the working able-bodied population? Yeah, you should be one of the ones most for what I describe. I mean, the work requirement that just passed allows volunteer, people to volunteer such as yourself, allows you to qualify for that. So I need, know, well, you need, I need some information when we wrap up our interview. <laughs> then, well, I'd again, it's the, it's the misinformation, I think, that's out there. And uh, John uh, continues to put that message out there. But the work requirement actually allows people to volunteer to waive that work requirement for people such as yourself. Also, the when you look at the insurance market, um, the large insurance companies are able to move your rates higher and higher because of the lack of competition. You know, we do not allow, we're requiring, if you want insurance, Arkansas Works requires you to buy insurance for things you don't need. Um, there's a whole list of those things. And other states are offering cheaper plans, and Idaho is one, is offering a cheaper insurance rate that doesn't include things on the Affordable Care Act. There's a whole list of items on the Affordable Care Act that, Cato, if you wanted insurance, you have to buy. You'll probably never be pregnant. But if you pay <laughs> I, I would hope not. <laughs> but if you buy insurance, you're paying for that. And our law currently does not allow us to offer insurance plans 
that don't include things from, Arcan from Obamacare, Arkansas Works. If we were to get off of this, we could actually offer you a more tailored insurance plan, one that you could afford, uh, cat as you mentioned, catastrophic insurance when you have major surgery. You could afford to buy that. And right now, people like you are priced out of that market. Well, that is definitely true. And that's a good point. And uh, Representative Sullivan, I definitely uh, appreciate your thoughts. And at least, you know, from, from my conversation with you, you know, you seem to have a desire to work uh, to help others. But one of the problems that I'm seeing in the political discourse, not just in Arkansas, but nationwide, is I think, and I'll, I'll use what Chief Elliott always said. I think we have a lot of people that are shouting at each other instead of talking to each other. There, um, it seems like our political climate is getting away from people who are looking for the best way to solve problems. Um, you know, it, we're quick to demonize each other. We're quick to um, put down each other. Um, you know, sometimes. For people who again need help but need assistance there are some of those and you know these are people that are on the extremes and you have extremists on the left and on the right as well that have this mentality well I've got mine uh, you get yours uh, if something happens to you that's just too bad um, and at least my thought process is you know we we're all on this planet together. We all got to help each other. And our pledge drive kind of helped to illustrate this. So my, my question to you, Representative Sullivan, what can we do to improve the political discourse so that our elected officials, once again, are looking for the best ways to solve problems and to bring back the spirit of compromise? You know, the, our, our Constitution, our founding, talk about the consent of the governed. And, you know, we, you and I talked before we went on air about how few people go vote and how my election, it's a primary election, we'll be lucky if we get 5% of the people out to vote. So when the people who elect us as representatives or senators or to whatever political office, when they do not go out and vote, then they're giving their consent to the behaviors that you just described. You know, my opponent um, or somebody working for my opponent has hired a law firm out of Washington, D.C. to investigate me for the past 10 years. They've hired another law firm out of uh, Little Rock to investigate me. It has to be about being personal and being able to take shots and the yelling as you described it. You know, John's letter was very typical of that, saying we're intimidated, we're trying to intimidate, when all we want to do is further the discussion. And I really appreciate you reaching out to me because that's what I want to do. Let's just have an open discussion. Let's let the data speak for itself. Let the information speak. And let's not try to shut people down. Let's welcome information. Let's encourage people to be informed. And let's really encourage them to go out and vote. You know, Thomas Jefferson, one of our founders, wrote a letter to the King of England when they were, we were having our little... Uh, yelling at each other battle back in the 1770s. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, King, you can only be our king if we say you can. That was a pretty bold guy. Well, it he, does make sense. And of course, history does show illustrations of where kings have been overthrown. And of course, and I appreciate uh, you accepting our invitation to come on because that's, you know, what we do here at KLEK. We, uh, we don't take sides. We invite people to come on we treat them fairly we allow them to speak uh, we don't yell over shout at them because um, i believe that our listeners our supporters are intelligent people that are capable of making up their minds based on the information that is presented yeah, in man. front of them i mean uh, senator cooper had the same opportunity he came on he said his piece you are now saying your piece and and the people can decide on which one of you that you know they agree with whether they totally agree with him totally agree with you or a mix in between uh, you know we just want to keep the public informed and that's why even though our pledge drive is over we still need your support and you can still call us at the station 870-277-1080 or on our website klkfm.org just, just want to plug that out there we do have a Facebook comment uh, Reverend Milton Culver says no it's not right well uh, Reverend Culver, please elaborate uh, on what you felt that uh, Representative Sullivan said that is not right. And uh, 
we'll ask him that. But uh, better hurry, you only got about 90 more seconds. So since we got about 90 seconds left, uh, Representative Sullivan, any final comments that you would like to say? Sure. You know, if people um, hear me and disagree, um, please give me a call. Reach out to me on Facebook. I'll be glad to meet with them. You know, I really don't like to get into these Facebook postings where we're arguing with each other but especially now that it's come out you know that you had these russian troll farms and i mean (laughs) and twitter well we already there was twitter bots before they talked about so you don't don't even know if you talk to a a, a real person online anymore yeah but reach out to me because you know you do rep we we represent the people and you know one of the things that happens in newspaper articles and in facebook people tend to just do a little bit of as you described yelling Mm -hmm. or just shouting out versus digging down into the detail. Uh, you know, this, with this works requirement, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of misinformation that goes out about that. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, disinformation and misinformation. And I would be uh, happy if somebody can correct my knowledge and in, give me better information. I'd certainly love to hear that, but let's make it based about facts and the What's going on? All right, Representative Sullivan, very quickly as we wind down, if people want to get in touch with you, if you have a phone number, website, email, Facebook, uh, please get that information out there. Yeah, sure. My cell phone is 870-275-2929. 870-275-2929. And on Facebook, it's uh, Dan Sullivan for Arkansas. All right. We want to thank Representative Sullivan for stopping by the studio today. And, of course, um, he is running for re-election. No, we're not going to tell you to vote for him. I'm not going to tell you to vote for anyone. But we will invite him back on Community Conversations um, for a full segment, and we'll get more in-depth into the issues and the things that he stands for. We'll also invite his opponent as well because, again, we believe in treating people fairly. I'm going to go ahead and go into a break. When we come back, a replay of our interview with Judge Thomas Fowler, the Amnesty Program. you got until Wednesday to sign up. KLEK. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back.